In the comments section of my previous video, I was more or less accused, obliquely, of playing what is now called the anti-Semitism card, i.e., uh, I was implying that any criticism of Israel is anti-Semitic. Now, I'm not going to say that people don't do that, that people don't just try and shut you down when you try and criticize things that Israel has done um, by accusing such critics of anti-Semitism. It happens every day. There are people who might actually believe that when you say anything at all bad about Israel, you're secretly a Nazi who wants to gas every Jew on the planet. People may sincerely believe this. But that doesn't alter the fact that there is anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish elements in criticism of Israel. Criticizing Israel is fine. Criticizing Israelis, uh, the Israeli government is fine. Uh, criticizing um, Israeli foreign policy is fine. Uh, criticizing Israelis is fine. But going after people and vilifying them for what they are, for their history, and for their very existence is not fine. It's not ever going to be fine. Because it's precisely the sort of thing I have repeatedly spoken out against when it comes to the Islamic world. If people have an issue with religion, that's fine by me. If people are atheists, uh, that's more than fine by me. If people don't want to practice any religion, or if they even have something against religion in general, that's fine. But if you go after one particular religion, Islam in this case, and then you start to hint other things, like Muslims are pedophiles, like uh, Muslims oppress women, Sorry, that you're not really being an atheist anymore. You're not really uh, criticizing certain tenets or beliefs that are inherent in Islam. You're going after a culture, a civilization, a people. That's vilification. That's the same thing. And the problem is, of course, whenever we in the West decide that we're going to vilify the Islamic world, we then justify the vilification of Jews that has taken place in our own past. Yes, that's exactly what we're doing, and yes, I understand that I'm uh, invoking Godson's law here. I don't care. It really is that bad. Having said that, I'm going to stick to my guns on my contention that there is um, a very open and dangerous hatred of Jews that has almost gone mainstream in the Islamic world. I'm not going to change my position on that, at least not yet. I'm going to have to see proof otherwise that that is changing. I'm going to have to hear more people speak out against that before my position is going to change. And one of, the, one of the reasons why I'm kind of a little bit more interested in this phenomenon of Jew hatred in the Islamic world is, I see its mirror image in my own civilization, and it worries me. Things that could never be said publicly 15 years ago are now being said all the time. And they're not being said about Jews, they're being said about Muslims. When some newspaper editor writing in a Pakistani uh, or uh, an Egyptian or a uh, Malaysian newspaper decides to go on a rant against the Jews, what he's doing is he's saying that it's okay for people to write like that about other people simply for what they are. He's not just attacking Jews. He's saying that this kind of editorialism is acceptable. The problem with that is, of course, I live in a civilization where I see Islamophobia on the increase, and it disturbs me. I see things written in the editorial columns of newspapers that I would never have believed that I would hear 15 years ago. Anti-Semitism, as it now stands, is not a modern thing. A lot of people believe that it began in 19th century France. It did not. It's as old as Western civilization, as Western civilization uh, sees itself. It goes back thousands of years, literally. And the original anti-Semitism, which is still latent in our own civilization, is not just confined to Jews. In fact, if you ask me, it predated even the West's con contacts with Jews and even with Muslims. It goes back to the very emergence of anything remotely resembling a Western identity. 
I'm going to be making a few videos on this subject because it's a subject that's interested me for a long time. And um, I'm going to go back in history quite a ways. It almost, if you ask me, seems as though the East is East and West is West and never the twain shall meet of Rudyard Kipling is the ultimate statement of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism today, if you ask me, is showing its most virulent form in Islamophobia in the West. And any Muslim out there who thinks that it's convenient to blame everything on the Jews is simply adding fuel to that fire. Thank you.